Hello, how are you today? I was thinking about leaving you. Um, a sort, a sort package from um, a book for a little bit. Where did I leave? Bird. I have no strolled around and turned his back on the sergeant and asked for a cigarette and sought to blather out to the room to his friend. What does my sergeant do, do you think, Mr. Shanahan? I'm saying nothing. Said nothing, Shanahan. By God, you're a wise man, sergeant cut up, keeps his mouth shut. Take a little run and jump twenty four feet. Do you tell me that? cried Percy. Twenty four feet. I'm not surprised, said Shanahan in his amazement. I'm not surprised. Go where you like in the wide world, you will always find that the Irishman is looked up to for his jumping. Right enough, said Percy, the name of Ireland is honoured for that. Go to Russia, said Shanahan, go to China, go to France. Everywhere and all the time it be cats off and a grammar. Everywhere and all the time it is hats off and a grandma cree to the jumping Irishman. Ask who you like, they'll all tell you that. The jumping Irishman. It's a thing, said Percy, that will always stand to us, something. When everything's said, said Lamont, the Irishman has his point. He's not the last man that was made now. He is not, said Percy. When everything had been said by Sweeney, said droning dark voiced Finn, a glimmering of reason assailed the madman to return his step in the direction of his people that he might dwell with them and trust them. But holy Ronan in the cell was a pint of angels of the intention of Sweeney and prayed God that he should not be loosed from his sanity until the soul had been first loosed from his body and here for the summary of the revolt. When the madman reached the middle of sleepy world, there were strange apparitions before him. Red hellish trunks and sunkless heads and five stubbly rough grey heads without trunk or body between them. Screaming and squealing and bounding hither. Screaming and squealing and bounding hither and thither about the dark road, beleaguering and besetting him. And shouting their mad abuse until he soared in the sprite of a rock in front of them. Piteous was the terror and the wailing cry. And the din and the harsh screaming, tumult of the heads and the dog sheds and the goat sheds in his pursuit. Thudding on his thighs and his calves on the nape of his neck and knocking against trees and the butts of rocks. A wild torrent of villainy from the breast of a high mountain. Not enough resting for a drink of water for Mad Sweeney till he finally achieved his peace in the tree of the sun that just bleed enough. Here he devoted his time to the composition and recital book. Here he devoted his time to the composition and recital of the lead 
Malodi here today is on the subject of his evil type. After that, he went on his career of wild folly from Lucair. Gay type. To the old gable of the clean stream and the elegant branches. Remaining there for one year on the sustenance of saffron hot red holly berries and black brown oak acorns, with drops of water from the gable, concluding there with the fashioning of the glade. Relation, I am swinging my body as a corpse, sleeping on music nevermore. Only the floor sleep. Relation, I am swinging. My body is a corpse, sleeping on music nevermore, only the flowing of the storm wind. I have journeyed from Lucaire de Agre, the gate, the kite, Lucaire de Agre, to the edge of the old gate. This is my fair. I can feel it not. I be very hope not. After that, Sweeney and his restlessness came to Al Farnan, a wondrous land it is with green strained water, containing multitudes of righteous people and a synod of saints. Heavy headed apple trees bending to the ground, well chalked with ivy, wondrous fruit loaded branches, wild geese and hares and heavy swine, and back fields sleeping in the sun. Fields on the sea beyond, and Sweeney said this Al Farnan. Resorts of saints, corners of hazel, fine nuts, swift water without deep coursing its flank. Plenteous are its green eyes, these, its masses covered. Its masses covered. The fair, heavy apple tree, they stooped their arms. At length, Sweeney penetrated to the place the head St. Molin was, that is to speak precisely. House Molin. The Psalter of Heaven was in Molin's presence, and he reciting it to his students. Sweeney came to the edge of the well and nibbled at the crust until the Molin said, Oh, madman, this is early, that is early eating. The Jew, then madman, and saint then embarked on a lengthy dialogue to the tune of twenty nine elegant verses, and then Molin spoke again. Your arrival here is surely welcome, Sweeney, he said, for it is destined that you should enter your life here and leave the story of your history and be buried in the churchyard there beyond. And now I bind you that, however much of Aaron that you want over wander, you will come to me each evening the way I can write your story. And so it was. Sweeney, returning from his wandering to and from the celebrated trees of Erin at the best of each evening, holding order the collation for the mad one at the hour, and commanding his cook to give him a share of the day's medicine. One night a dispute arose among the serving women over their head, Sweeney, the madman being accused for an act of adultery in the head by a herd sister, as she went with her measure of milk in the evening to the place. It One night, a dispute arose among the serving women over the head of Sweeney, the madman being accused of an act of adultery in the head by a herd. In the hedge, by the herd's sister, she went with a measure of milk in the evening. She placed it in a hole in the cow dung for Sweeney. The herd's sister pretended the honor will lie in her ear of the brother. He immediately took a spear from the rack in the house, and Sweeney's flank was being towards him as he lay in the cow dung and at his busted neck. He was wounded by a spear cast in the left nipple, so that the point went through him and made two halves of his back. An acolyte at the door of the church was witnessed by the black deed from a saint of moaning who happened with a concourse of honorable clerics and patient men had been for filling in the morning. Such is the deed you have done over, said Sweeney. For owing to the wound you have dealt me, I cannot henceforth escape through the hedge. I did not know you were there, said the herd. By Christ, man, said Sweeney, I have not injured you at all. 
Christ curse on you, O Lord, good morning. Therefore, thereafter, they had to look away and talked out loud, talked loudly together until the attitude of plurality of slaves plainly terminates in the talking with these verses. There was a time when I preferred the low convert assuming the accent of the church was of Latin of our school. There was a time when I preferred to the tinkle of neighbor bells, the voice of the blackbird from the crag, and the bailing of the stag in a storm. There was a time when I preferred to the voice of a fine woman mammy, the call of the mount of the mountain grouse towards its eyes. There was a time when I preferred the yapping of the wolves to the voice of the ferret, smelling and meddling with me. Thereafter, a death swoon of their obscenes, so that molding and experience arose to each man and placed the stone on Trudy's tomb. There indeed is he whose tomb, whose tomb it is, said Moling. Dear to me, the man man, delightful to behold him at yonder well. Its name is Madman's Well, for often he would feast on its breakfast and its water, and the well is named after him on account of that. Dear to me every other place that Queenie was. Dear to me every other place that Queenie was wont to frequent. And Molly addressed himself to the composition in the horny tongue recital of these following poems. Here is a tomb of swinging, his memory racks my heart. Dear to me, therefore, the haunt of the saintly madman. Dear to me, Glen Bocane, fair for swing lovely. Dear the streams that leave it, dear its green crowned cripples. Dear its green crowned cripples. That beyond his madman's well, Dear the man is nourished, there its perfect stands, beloved its clear what beloved its clear waters. Melodious was the talk of Sweeney, long shall I hold his memory. I implored O King of Heaven. On his team above his grave. To be continued next time. Biographical Remnants, Part 6. Swan around. That was a little excerpt. That was a little excerpt. On excellent two birds. I really like it. It's just been, been quite a long time since I've heard it. I think I'm like a little bit more. Thank you.